Hi, I'm Kevin Hill, and today we're going to do something that's just a little different. We're going to do an entire painting with just clouds in it. It should be a lot of fun. And if you're enjoying these and you want to see more, be sure to leave a like and subscribe for more painting videos. All right, let's get started. As you can see, I just did a quick sketch. Actually, it's a fairly detailed sketch. It was still done pretty quick. Kind of sloppy. That's okay. Now, I did not put anything on the canvas except for that, so it's dry. Obviously, except for that. But I have my clear gel right here, and I'm going to work the clear gel in with my paint. This is not normally what we do when we paint a sky. But I think that what I'm going to do is maybe these white light areas, I maybe don't want any clear gel in them. I do want it in the darks, so I think I'm just going to paint the darks in manually, mixing it in, rather than just spreading it over the entire canvas. Ordinarily, it really didn't make any difference For on a sky. You know, I just paint the clouds right over the clear gel and white mix, but just today, because of the amount of detail that I'm going to try to work in, I think that we need just a little bit more of a firm paint. There. <laughs> cool. So what, every time I go down to my palette, I'm going to try to change up my color. And again, you see why I sketch. Just you don't need much. Just a, a corner of your brush right in there is good enough. You see why we sketch, though? Look at that. Mm, that's great. Make sure you get all the canvas holes covered up. That's actually going to be something that's easier than said, said than done, believe it or not. It really will be because we're using softer brushes because I'm trying to get a little bit more of a softer effect today. There. All right, I'm just going to go around kind of on this one, a couple of the major clouds, and really work in, work in this nice dark, kind of kind of broken up with a little bit of mid-tone every once in a while. There, see? <laughs> Fun. And I'm using a little bit of red in there to give myself purples, but I do want it more of a blue sky today, so not too much of that. Just every once in a while, and maybe we'll do that in the highlights, just to give it some life and a little bit of warmth, you know? Cool. Now I'm going to add a nice dark here under the clouds, and you can see that is actually not white. That's obviously not white. And that is a little white there, but what you can see is I'm just leaving these blank areas. And by not white, you know what I mean. I didn't put white paint there. <laughs> oh boy. Okay. Anyway, the idea is I just, I think we are going to be so much better off doing it this way. Uh, right up here. <laughs> there we go. So I'm trying to figure out, you know, I got my lines, but then I got to decide, you know, where's the highlight and the shadow going to be. Some of this is just shadow. That's what I'm cutting in right now. There. It's okay to, to kind of be loose with this because you can always, and you see this what I did up here, take a paper towel and kind of carve out where you want your highlight. And of course, you, if you'd rather not go to all this trouble, you can just throw in some blue and then start highlighting over top. Perfectly fine, but it just probably would take a little longer and be a little more challenging. That's my thought at least. I've done very few of these big skies. Well, actually, I've done some big skies. <laughs> I've done very few paintings where the whole canvas is a sky. So I'm trying to play around and find out different ways to make things work. That's kind of where I'm at, so I'm giving you my ideas. Hopefully that helps you. And if you guys have ideas that you want to try, give them a shot. If they work, let me know what they are. <laughs> That'd be great. Cool. Just keep running that dark in and around like this. I might leave just a, you know what we can do right here? I'm going to sneak a mid-tone. See, I'm still just working with all my same colors here. Maybe sneak a mid-tone action right here and blend them together just like this. Yeah, that looks good. Lots and lots of layers. you got to have tons of layers because this is all the painting is. And so in order to make it interesting, you've got to have a lot of different layers and values and colors. <laughs> no, no two brush. No two brush stroke clouds for us today. <laughs> Not today. <laughs> there. Now I'm dropping in a little bit more of a light color up here. So on this side we went pretty dark, and on this side I think we're gonna go a little lighter. Here, look at the, the palette. There's my white, and it's just tinted with a little red, plus I'm anticipating it mixing with all the colors up here. So that it doesn't seem, uh, there we go, a little more red. <laughs> so it doesn't seem too bright. There, see how that works? Plus my brush has kind of got some mud in it. I haven't changed to a different brush or anything. So that also helps with the toning down of this little cloud area. Now, I think right in through here especially, I'd like to paint in just a few 
kind of looser clouds like this, you know, more like the way we would normally do it, not leaving the highlight area blank. There. Nice. That gives us a really, really good mid-tone cloud that I think is actually really pretty. Maybe just a little, a little of that right in there, and then we can actually put the highlight on that one like we will everything else. Cool. Now wipe my brush. I always have to wipe your brush either on the palette or on a paper towel before reloading. Otherwise, you know, things get kind of muddy. Now, right in through here, I'm just going to use big broad strokes. That's, again, not enough red. Big broad strokes to kind of drop in movement. And I'm going to try to keep this moving in such a way that just really gives the sky a little more interest. we got to build as much interest in the sky as possible. But see how you can leave your big brush strokes. Gotta love the brush strokes, right? Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, that's good. You can toss in a little blue here and there, like that. If you need to cool this area down, don't want it to feel like a different painting, so yeah, let's cool this area down a little. Oh yes. All right, there you go. If you ever get to where you feel like you're out of control, stop it and wipe that area down with the paper towel. Yeah, a little more blue down in here. Cool that area off as well. Now this area, I'm gonna do the highlights, so not too much. Now we're not done with the darks, but I do wanna come back in, you know, and mess around with them, add some more dark and some more pockets of in and out areas, you know, to create depth. I'll just do that later though. I wanna get some highlight in before we get too far. So I got a nice peach color mixed up here on a clean three quarter brush. One for light, one for dark, and I like another one just to have for blending and other random things you might need another one for. All right, now I'm gonna come in. Now this peach color, well, let me finish my sentence. I'm gonna come in and just cut in carefully like this. You're gonna probably wanna stop and wipe out your brush before reloading it. And when I mean probably want to, it, it really does mean you should do it. <laughs> there we go. It's okay to come over your dark, but you wanna Really be sure that you have some of this red in the peach color. It's red and a little yellow ochre. I don't, I don't have anything else in there, obviously, except the white. Nice. Normally, I really don't care about mud, but keep it mud free if you can. Yeah, there we go. See, stroke it on very lightly. So I'm using the three quarter brushes and using a lot of paper towels too. They're so soft. You could use a detail round, but that's tiny for this job if you ask me. So we'll use this one. I'm definitely prioritizing the outside edge of the clouds. Yeah, because the inside edge, we do want it to blend. And so we might need another color. Wow, look at that. Isn't that, isn't that pretty? <laughs> there we go. In fact, I do. I want a lot of lumpy bits in this cloud. I don't want it just dead. So there you have it. Mm. It's okay if a little bit of mud drags in like that. I just leave that. In fact, it's maybe not a bad thing. It helps to soften that edge. You don't want a hard edge. So maybe come back in here and just soften that edge out. Try not to. Try not to, though, get it kind of too blurry. We don't want blurry. Soft and blurry are not always the same thing. Now the entire canvas still is not covered, but that's okay. I'm really not too concerned about that yet. I'm going to, before we get too far, kind of melt some of this highlight into the shadow using this mid-tone color. <laughs> Imagine that. There. So you can, this is like my dark brush. So I still got my light brush ready. It's really important especially when you're doing something like this where you probably will need the freedom to bounce back and forth between stuff. You'll see something like, oops, I gotta fix that, you know what I mean? You wanna be able to have a clean brush ready to go. At least it helps me. It really does, it makes a lot of difference. Ooh, there's a nice thick spot of paint. I borrow that paint actually and bring it around like this. But this wonderful red tone that we're using mixes it well with the blue. It just creates a soft purple. And the red tone obviously mixes as well with the more yellowy golden tones that we have in the cloud highlights. So it's really good, perfect color, really. Good, perfect color for melting these two together. And I'm going slow because all we're doing is the sky. <laughs> so no reason to rush it. We're not painting trees today. 
so we don't need to get done with this guy and move on. Yeah, I'm actually going to watch this. I'm going to take the paper towel and I'm going to, because this is just a little too, too much paint, I think. I'm just going to wipe, wipe it right down. I like to just wipe it once or twice and then change sides, otherwise you get those little shavings of paper towel in there. Of course, you can use a rag or something. That would probably be a good idea. It would not leave a shaving, but the paper towels are so convenient, you know, whatever. <laughs> there we go. Now, something important that we're going to start working on right now, after we get this built in, all these little mid-tones built in, is trying to create a little more dimension in this area. I don't want this cloud just flat like this. All the layers are nice, but watch this. Take this brush and just start lots of paint and start building out these, there, <laughs> these round bits. So you have layers and layers in your clouds. And then, because our light's coming across like this, I have no idea if I mentioned that or not. You want your layers kind of to be on the top and on the left. Mm. Oh yeah, look at that. These are not quite as bright as the outside edge. And so we don't care if we have to paint them over the dark. Plus, like I said, you can wipe it if you feel the need. Mm, right there. And quickly let it fade out to dark. Oh yeah. Now we're starting to put on a little more paint. So don't get out of control when you do this. Keep control over the consistency of the paint on the canvas. Otherwise it will get muddy. So that's kind of my one caution. You can use the blender brush if you want to. See all that brush stroke mess? And you can sort of touch it. And Soften it. Looks like blender brush is a little dirty. Oops. There. Oh yeah. Don't soften it though to the point where it's blurry. Just sort of knock it out of focus a little. And then come back and then take a good look. Oh yeah. <laughs> Building in the layers. So we'll just continue doing this over and over again until pretty much this, this cloud here has a lot of depth and is really, really pretty. With the detail round brush, I'm just going to kind of detail out, imagine that, the, the clouds. And I'm kind of working on the, the shadows right now. A minute ago, I hit the highlights once or twice. I think I need to go back and do some more highlight work. Let me wipe out that brush. And see, we can just sneak on a little more highlight. And honestly, some more little tiny brush strokes are just really good. Really good for stuff like this because it creates detail pretty much just automatically by stroking it. Ooh brush hair and that wasn't even from that brush it was from something else stuck on the palette and it got stuck on the brush oh funny <laughs> okay let's see maybe right in here as well so you can kind of glop it on a little thicker with this brush very soft so it cooperates when it comes to stuff like this yeah that's cool all right you can really just spend hours on this just putting in all sorts of little details but make sure that everything keeps with the theme of the area. By theme, I really am talking about the, um, you know, the contrast and the shadows and all that. It's like, like I wouldn't want to just go up here and start rubbing this color up there unless I make like a little, you know, just a little cloud or something. What I would do instead is take this and kind of run it back and see, create a better edge there. Much, much nicer that way. See that? Mm. So it kind of keeps with what you're already doing. You're not really changing anything. You're just adding those final brush strokes that really help. There, I'm just finishing up kind of adding a little silver lining to a couple of these clouds, just brightening them up one last time with the detail round brush. Let's go up here, kind of show you what I did. You need a lot of paint and I've got it kind of warmed up with a little red, make a nice light pink and I'm just going to drop this in just almost by tapping it and just flicking it a little. You can't just get up here and stroke it on. You have to kind of tap it and flick it so you leave some texture. It's a little hard to see, but there is some texture there. There's very little texture in this painting, so you don't have to glop it on as thick as you would in a landscape painting. And it just adds a silver lining that is so pretty to these clouds. Don't overdo it. But you notice that we got some soft areas and some harsh areas over here. These harsh areas really help to add a little depth because we're just doing a sky painting. You still have to build depth, and so we're using fuzzy angles and sharp angles to do that. <laughs> nice. One of the last things that we're going to do today is add color 
to the bottom. I don't know why we forgot to do this. We've just been too busy doing other things. It's been way too much fun. But I think a little extra color down here will help ground the painting. So you see that <laughs> ground the painting. <laughs> All right. Cool. That's that's actually really nice. I, I like that color at the bottom. It just and the contrast there is nice. But what I'm doing is I'm just pushing it into the blank areas. You see we still have these blank areas to work with. And then what we can do is just take any brush, filbert brush would be all right. And well, that one will get a little paint into it just because it has a little green. I don't want that. And just very carefully blend these two together. All right, well, I think we're done. I had a lot of fun. I hope you did too. Don't forget to check out our website, DVDs and Brushline. Thanks for watching.